Okay, so let's begin the, our morning session. The first speaker is Yi Shi, who will present his third lecture about spectrum rigidity and joint integrability for Anosov systems on Tori. And he, I asked him to give a good show so that he will keep us warm because there is no way of making this room any warmer right now. <laughs> we should keep moving. We should keep moving. I see a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> discussions with, with, with gestures. This will help, but I, I'm afraid this is the only thing I can offer right now. <laughs> so, yeah. So, ah, uh, okay. Uh, so who is the tallest? Christian. Okay, e, please. Okay, uh, thank you. And thank you, everyone. And I will present my third talk about these things. And 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 for this this part, there's uh, nothing about uh, the defending things and uh, no more any any calculation things anymore. It's just purely uh, geometric and uh, and we can see like uh, what happens. Okay, and we still can string some kind of uh, analysis of different morphisms and uh, on torus. Okay. Uh, Let's just recall some something in, in the first lecture about the local rigidity. And we know like that uh, we, we have some matrix, which is irreducible and also have some, some conditions about the eigenvalues and its uh, generic property as we mentioned before. Okay, and for, for this one, and, and we know like it has a finite dominant splitting like this, like uh, that is, uh, uh, every bundle, like in every bundle, like all the eigenvalues have the same absolute values, and the dimension is at most two. So either so it is either real or, or something like a complex, like a complex rotation times some home city, like in, in these bundles. And this is uh, some some automorphisms we are constrained of. Okay. <clears throat> Right now, and, and we know like that for any F, which is uh, C2 uh, smooth and also C1 close to A, and then it will have also the same uh, dominant splitting with the same dimension. And also we, we in before we split the stable bundles into two bundles, which is uh, strong stable, and the other is uh, the weak stable. And we, we split at the dice of K here. And so now, like for our F, we, we have a partially hyperbolic splitting. And also recall like here, our F is also a NOSOF. And also like the, in the center bundle is actually also contracting, but uh, weak contracting. Okay, it is also weak contracting and also like strong state, strong contract. Okay, and okay. And, and one remark for the things about like uh, for the integrability of these bundles is, is like this. And if you continuously, because like from I to J about S from I to J, that, that's something continuously, you know, like it is always integrable because you have two things. One is like you have the stable manifold theory it tells you like the strongest contracting, which started from one to something J here, these two, they, they, all these are integral because you have stable manifold theory. And also, you know, like that uh, you have some kind of normally hyperbolicity about like in the center manifolds that is from I to L, that is some I here and to L. So these things, because it is normally hyperbolic and also actually because at, at the beginning, like you are smooth. So it is a plague expensive, actually, you know that. And this tells you, okay, it is also like integral from the work of Hirsch Q2. And uh, then you take the intersection of these foliations and it tells you like from I to J, which is continue, uh, which is uh, the, the bundle, like is the intersection. So it is integral. Okay, it is integral. Actually, you can make it, it's, it's actually like a uniquely integral because these two are some kind of uniquely integral. Okay. And we have showed like in, in these settings, we have something like uh, uh, that's uh, to be uh, C1 close for F C1 close to A, then we have some kind of uh, the equivalence between like the uh, SU integrability and the spectrum rigidity in the weak stable bundle. Okay, that's what we have said. Like uh, SU is integrable, then you will have like the spectrum rigidity and in, in the weak stable bundle. And actually, like you know, like the country say you can make it actually of, uh, C1 plus alpha in the weak stable bundle along the weak stable bundle. Okay, that's what we have shown. 
But there is one thing, one thing that's which is a key point for us is like during the proof, when we have like S, S, and U is jointly integral, then we know like the conjugacy maps the strong stable foliation to the linear strong stable foliations. And this is the key point, like we can get some defending approximate, defending density estimation about, about the strong stable foliations. That's the key part. And we actually use it repeatedly, right? And moreover, like forget this, because we know like as we explained before, like we know like the unstable foliation after the conjugacy is to the unstable foliation of, of our A, of the linear part, which also minimal and linear. And we use the fact like any foliations on the detours, which is sub foliated by some minimal linear foliations itself must be minimal and linear. And then we can get like the strong stable foliations maps to the strong stable. That in some sense is, is the key point. So I just want to show, I want to tell you. Uh, SS is, uh, is uh, is here like from one to k that is a bundle yeah yeah sorry so it's always from two k yeah because uh yeah for f for f l f is always f is always the foliation for f and yeah l is for a yeah l is always sorry is some um, yeah l is always for a because we use a linear linear yeah just linear yeah, okay and okay, and that is for the linear. Right? So, so you will have the thing. And, and the key point is, is actually crucial, like that uh, the bundle integral, uh, the joint integral bundle, one of them is will maps to the lead. That's a crucial problem, crucial, uh, the key fact. And actually we can have some questions, which is much more general. And uh, that's the thing like uh, which this project uh, initiate I, I want to solve at first but actually i don't get it in, in general it's like what happens like we pick some bundles in s and pick one bundles in u and if these two are joint integrable and what will happen? that is a quite nature question because before what we say about the joint integrability and we put all the unstable together right it, it is to the limit right now and when we pick two of them and what will happen? That, that's uh, the thing. And maybe we can expect it as we said, like uh, something if you have SU integrability and it will give you like some spectrum rigidity in the center. And it does seem something we can, we can guess, but, uh, and actually that is some kind of uh, necessary condition because like in some sense, like uh, if you have the spectrum rigidity in, in this bundles in the center and you can actually get like it is these two foliations, this tangent to these two foliations, we are maps to the linear corresponding foliations of it with the corresponding index. And this is some, some works actually when, when this all one dimensional is worked by Andre in 2008 and then by uh, even with Boris and uh, Victoria like in, in, in that 2011. And it was for them to study like the periodic data in price smooth conjugacy works. So it tells you, okay, it will map to the linear. And you know, like for the linear foliation on the torus, they are always strongly integral. And you make makes your edge maps back and it gives you, okay, like you have the joint integrability. But in general, like if you have joint integrability, whether it, uh, it, it implies like you have spectrum rigid in, in the center, we don't know. Is something, and we in this talk I, I will present you some partial results, and which is uh, uh, I think is very limited. So let's go back to the first thing, like we have talked before about the work of Federico. It's like he's studying some kind of a which is uh, irreducible and partially hyperbolic with two dimensional truly center. Okay, truly center, which is an isometry in the center, just like uh, come uh, with all eigenvalues equal to zero. So I make some mistakes in my first talk because I say I see this uh, this matrix first in the last page of the book of Hirschfeld shoe, and Case told me like actually the first is early like 1968, like in the in the paper of uh, 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 by Peter Workers, yeah, and study which is study some kind of ergodicity of uh, fine automorphisms. Yes, okay. 
And okay, that's that's uh, history. And so it's a long history to me. Almost uh, uh, it's already 50 years. Okay. And then like we have show like a uh, federal shows like uh it, it's when it's C22 close to A, your F is C22 close to A. And if you have the SU integrable and it will apply like you have a homeomorphism, which is C1 along the, the centers, along the center, such that it is uh, actually a truly topological concave and all exponents are zero. And it use some KM method for computing defects. And we will show, I, I will tell you how, how we do in, in this talk, because we, we will try to handle something similar problems. Okay. And actually later, like uh, uh, Marcelo and uh, Avila, the, the gives like uh, to show, like if you restrict the perturbation to be symplectic more, that and see infinite close to A, and they got a very sharp dichotomy, and which shows like either your F is accessible, and then like your, your center exponents are non-zero, that is non-uniform, non-uniformly hyperbolic. Like in the center, you have one positive and one negative exponents, or it is SU integrable. And in this setting, because you are symplectic and you can get at the, the contribution of H is worthy of preserving and actually thin infinite smooths. That, that, but this is only in dimension four. In higher dimensions, like a stable bundle, unstable bundle to be higher dimension, it doesn't work. It's only in dimension four. And in particularly, it actually shows like some kind of A is robustly for null. But in, and here again, like when you can get C infinite because like you use some KM series. Okay. All right, that, that's something. And because it's quite similar to, to what I plan to talk today is okay. And so, here is our main theory. We constrain some kind of matrix with, uh, which is irreducible, and it have a dominant splitting is to be like this. Like you have a strong stable and weak stable, and a strong unstable and a weak unstable. So both like this weak unstable and a weak stable and a weak unstable are all one dimension. So right now, basically, you are constraining something like in the center, you are two dimension. Okay, in the center, you are two dimension. And so right now we can string for my F, which is C1 close to A, and with the splitting, like also with the same thing, like this is one dimensional and this also one dimensional. So, okay. And we get thing is like this. We get the following equivalent, like the SS and the UU are, joint, uh, are jointly integrable if and only if F is spectral rigid along the weak stable and the weak unstable. So you, you can say like this thing is a little bit similar to, to the work of Federico, but in the central two dimensional case, the difference is for him is like you are center isometry. You are just rotation things. And for us, for us, it is something like you, you, are, you are just in the center, you are hyperbolic dynamics. But the thing I want to mention here is in this part, we don't assume any center bunching conditions with respect to these things. So because this one may be contracting and may be contracting very strong, but close to the strong stable. And this one may be expanding also strong, close to the unstable. So we don't have any center bunching. And so this SU foliations, when you integrate it, it don't have any regularity. It's just a holder foliation in the transversal direction. But itself, it may be see infinite smooth because both strong stable and strong unstables are seeing uh, are foliations with seeing infinite leaves. But in transversely, they don't have any regularities. It's just a holder thing. So it's impossible for us to apply the arguments before about the Federico to, to handle these questions. Okay. And so, so I think this is just as a, uh, some kind of partial results for, for us. Okay. And we can have some one corollary, which is also similar in the symplectic setting. And we say like uh, you have a matrix which is symplectic and hyperbolic, okay, irreducible with the splitting also into four bundles. And all of them are one dimensional. So basically it is some kind of hyperbolic automorphism, which is uh, not conformal, right? In, in, the stable, in the stable bundle, the action is not conformal. You have the splits, okay. 
And so right now we can spring like for some symplectic F, which is C1 close to A, and also with the splitting. Okay, also with the splitting. And then we, we have this result, which is like your SS and UU is integrable, then it is C1 plus some conjugate to A. Okay, and one remark for here is like, uh, because what we handle is just like get some C1 regularities. But if you want something like with the same infinite regularity, then you uh, can apply some recent work of Jin uh, Wang and uh, Boris and uh, Victoria about, but well, for that setting, you need like your F is thing infinite close to A and you can get some simple regularity, very, very high regularities also. So, uh, okay. And that is the corollary. And I think the corollary, the proof is something uh, quite standard because like, uh, uh, one one part is if you have smooth conjugate, then you have spectrum rigidity in weak stable and a weak unstable. And then you can apply previous work of entry and to show like actually in this setting, your edge maps strong stable to the linear one and it match the strong unstable to the linear ones and you get joint integrable. And for, for conversely, like if you have SU integrable and we, as this uh, previous work tells you, okay, you have spectrum, rigidity along like a uh, weak stable and a weak unstable. So actually this tells you like in the center foliation, which we, is the joint of weak stable and weak unstable, H is C1 plus alpha smooth. And it tells you, okay, and your H maps strong stable to, to, to the strong stable, un, strong unstable to the strong unstable. And okay, and this tells you like actually, because you know like your H, the holonomy maps gives you like your SU foliation is actually C1 plus because in the transversal direction, it is like, a, okay, in the transverse direction, like your, your H maps is C1, okay, it's C1. And uh, your, the, 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 the holonomy of the LSU linear one is also C1. So, so you can get that, yeah, I, I will check, right? Okay. <clears throat> because here is the part, you know, like you, you have some H, okay, you have FSU foliations and you have some H and you also have maps to LSU formations. And actually you, you want to say the whether it is smooth because you know, like this has smooth leaves. So what you do, you look at the holonomy map of HSU, which from center to the center. Okay. And you know, like uh, this is the holonomy map of your, of your L. S, uh, of your L and which is linear from LC to LC. And you know, like you have your conjugacy H in the center. So you know like that this one is smooth, C1 plus alpha, and this one is linear, so smooth, and your maps map also smooth. So this tells you like your holonomy map of SU foliations is actually also C1 plus alpha. So this gives like your SU foliations is actually C1. And right now, you, why you need simplex, uh, symplectic structure is here, because you know, like when your SU foliation is C1 plus, and then your center foliation is also C1 plus. That's the key factor we use in like the, the symplectic structure. Without this, you don't, have, you don't have the regularity of center foliations. And then you can, some standard calculation tells you, okay, your H is actually absolutely continuous along the SU foliation, and absolute continuity tells you, okay, you have the periodic data along S and U foliations. And actually you can get like a C1 smooth by some Trufanet theory. Okay, that's some standard procedure. And the key point that you use is just symplectic structure here. Like a one foliation is smooth, then the symplectic perpendicular foliation will also get it smooth. That is st symplectic structure applies. Okay. And now I, I try to prove theorem one. And so that's the setting, right? We have some kind of irreducible A and we have some splitting for F, which is close to A, have the, that the weak stable is one dimensional and the weak unstable is also one dimensional. And right now we assume like it is to integrate to uh, some foliation, which is SU foliation of your F. And the main problem is like this foliation after conjugacy, whether it is to the linear one or not, we have no information about that at all. Actually, as I said, like at the first, when, when I try to 
to initiate this project, I told to Andrew, Andrew, we can do that. I think this is must to be lean. And he said, why? And then I think something like, okay, it's not so obvious. And actually it's not, it's, it's truly non-trivial and we don't know. And <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so the key point is how could we get this thing, right? When we have like the strong stable and or strong unstable to maps to the linear one, and I think like we can get the thing because we just can apply like theory, the, the theorem in the first lecture and we get everything. So that is lemma one, and which tells you, okay, if one of these things like the strong stable and unstable or the stable and the strong stable is integrable. Okay, uh, let's go here. Uh, uh, just have PTB, which is S S plus V S U plus V T. And okay, this two is E S. This two is E D. Okay, as we said, like if you have this two joint ball with this one, and you will get rigidity in this, and or you have this one joint ball with this one. Okay, also have the spectrum rigidity in weak state. Okay, that's the thing. So, right. And we want to say like, one of this is integrable, then we are done. Okay, one of this is integrable, then we are done. Why, for example, if you have the strong stable joint integral with the unstable one, then it is linear, right? Because like, you know, like your HFU, it is linear and a minimal. So it saturated the, the, the things and this one must to be linear and a minimum. So you can tell you like this one strong stable actually match, maps to the strong stable. Okay, so this gives you like actually the, the, the weak stable exponents. Like with this one, you will get the rigidity in this exponent. And in the meanwhile, you know, like your SU foliation is also sub foliated by the strong stable foliations of A. That is a linear one also linear and a minimal. And you know like that your H maps that the UU foliation of F to the UU foliation of A. So this gives you like the spectrum rigidity in the weak unstable. And then you applying the things like get the spectrum rigidity in everything. Okay, sorry, this is not seem to but just uh, like the, uh, the previous thing. Yeah, okay. So actually the same holds if you take this strong stable joint ball with the weak unstable or the weak stable joint with UU. That's the same, that's the same. But we will not use this, it's just, yeah. So, so for now, and we know like one of these satisfy, then we are done. So now we need to constrain the situation like both of these two are not in T. Okay, both of them are not in T. And right now we, we try to look at the things on, on the universal cover and try to do some solvable action things. Okay, because we have SU foliation. In the SU foliation, you will always get some kind of ZD actions. How, how could you say that? Let's see the linear one at first. So we have like, look at the center foliation of, uh, of your, of your that, that is you lift it in the universal cover. And you know, like for your A, you will have the split, right? You have like, that is your center foliation of your A. Okay, that is for A and that is the zero point and you will have the center of zero, which is weak stable of zero plus the weak unstable of zero. And also you will have the transverse that is uh, subspace, which is LSU of zero, right? Okay, and you can say like, you can have a, actually a, a linear action is something, something an action like which like this. You put a K which belongs to Z and the N belongs to ZD. And actually you, the action is like this. You act by A K times and a plus some N which to ZD and tells you, okay, and intersect with zero. How, how could you do that? That means you take some points X which belongs to, to the center of zero and you iterate by A K times to here, and you plus some latest number like A K X plus some N. 
this one belongs to ZD, right? And you can string the SU and the foliation of the SU foliation intersect with this one. Okay, that's the point where you define alpha KN of X. Go back to the center. So it is actually, you can say it's quite a, it is uh, some direct calculation tells you, okay, it actually looks like this. So you, you iterate this K times and plus the, in the, you know, the factors of N in the center, along the center. That's the action, that's the linear action. And actually some simple calculation tells you like it's actually a solvable action, right? The commutator is ZD. Okay, the commutator support is ZD. Okay, and okay, so that's the picture. That's the picture I drawn here. And you can say like your X iterate K times by A and then plus some N and use some SU formations to intersect it here. And this is the action, like the linear action. Okay, this is, this is quite simple, right? It's quite simple. And right now we have like, as we assumed, we have an SU formation. And this SU foliation, right now we can string some kind of F, a lift of uh, or F on TD, and by some smooth translations, because your F is close to A, we can assume like for the zero point is also a fixed point of our big F. And then you can tell us like, because it is, uh, it is small perturbation of A and hot up to A, then you can tell us like you have this action relation, right? And also it maps the center foliation of zero to the center foliation of zero. <clears throat> now we can define the things by, uh, by the same action, like by the SU foliations. It's the same, it will be the same. I, I will have the picture later. So that is, you take a point, you iterate it by F, K times. Okay, it's also in the center foliation of zero and you plus some N, which belongs to ZD. And you can string the SU foliations. It's just like here, and you intersect with your center point. <clears throat> okay, and this gives you an action, and we can see some. This that's the picture. So you iterate it k times, and you plus some m, and you intersect with SU foliations. Please notice that here, when you SU are integrable, and you have small perturbations of the original linear one. So you always have the global product structure of the center foliation and SU foliations. So you, you intersect with the point. And now that is a solver action. And the key point is actually like whether this solver action is, can be conjugated back to the linear one by our big edge. Okay, if you can get that one, it will tell you, okay, your edge maps the SU foliation of your F to the SU foliation of your A. But actually, we, we will prove like not 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 in this way, but we just prove directly. And this is your for the uh, the the solve by uh, the action induced by SU, and we can prove like that it's actually a solvable action. That is, it is for for the part of the D, it is actually a commuting action, and then you can show like the commutator subgroup is actually the D. So this is actually a solvable action. Okay, and moreover, we can show you like that because you have these things and you can show like for any K which is non-zero and N which is also non-zero and there exists some uh, integers like uh, D plus one integers which is are not all zeros such that you will have all this composed together. You will get an identity. That is also part of the solve action. Else, okay. The proof is quite so. For for the rest, the main idea is for us is to to show as I explained, like if one of these are integrable, then we are done, right? But we will show like if both of them are not integrable, then this action induced could not to be solved. But I have told you it is solvable, so this is a contradiction and tells you like both of these must be joined in. Okay, so how first thing is how we just give a short proof of the, like the, my, the, this action so So the commuting paths is you just calculated directly. So that's the definition, right? You have X plus N2 and intersect with this center formation. And then you do it again by the definition. 
like take the SU for ratio again and intersects with zero. And you know, like that thing is actually, you can put M1 plus M2 to here and intersect with the center for ratios because you take the SU for ratio, take two times, it's also the SU. And you can see like here, the plus is just the plus in ZD. So it is commuting and it gives you, okay. And the second part for the solve by action, it will be the same. You just take these things, K and zero and zero N and minus K things. And you just do it by definition, right? Because K, this is F power minus K, K times iteration. And you take the definition, sorry, it's here also. And then you will comes you action by FK. And you know, like FK acting on the lattice will be AK equal to AK. And it gives you the equality. It's just some director do its systems by the calculator. <clears throat> so uh, when you get these things and you can know like for, for this commutators, uh, Calculation, it gives you this one, which is belong to ZD. That is directly things. And you know, like, things F is Arnosov. And so the power of A iterated with some N minus identity times N is, is non zero because A is Arnosov. So right now you have D plus one non zero elements in ZD. So they are must linear related. It gives you, so you can find some integers, which is not all zeros. And you take the sum, they are zeros. That's some simple things. And this gives you, okay, you take that, the action will be identity because it goes to zero, right? It goes to zero. So this gives you this. And we will use this later and we will to, to deduce the contradiction from this equality, okay? Right now, okay. Now we, we have like, the action, okay, that's, okay. I want to say something more about this solver action. As we say, like this of K of N of X, which is equal to what? F to S U and F K of X plus N and intersect with FC tuta of zero. So how could you look at the things? And here X belongs to FC tuta of zero. Okay, right now, and we know like how, notice like, draw bigger. So you take a point X, which belong to the center foliation of zero. And you know, like this one is actually F invariant. So you iterate it by your F to here, and you plus something. You plus something to K of X plus some N, and you iterate it. Okay, sorry, you take the intersection of F S U to tau. and you comes to here. That is your alpha kn of x. Okay, that's the same. And in particularly, and you know like for how about this thing? In particularly, when you take your k is to be zero, when you take k to be zero. K is to be zero. So that means you don't iterate it at all, right? You don't iterate it at all. And this picture would be like this. So it's directly, you take like some point X plus N and you use SU for the intersect here. Right? So that's the thing. Let's see what the image, we take a set, some, some set here. Let's we take a set K. Okay, K. And we want to show like, what is zero N of K? It is of course contained in the center foliation of zero, right? And, but what it is, it's the same, right? You take, you lift it, right? So what is that? You take the, we look at this. So we take 
uh, SU foliations of N, right? That is actually, let's see, we, we can put a zero here and you will have some N here, right? You have some N here and you plus something so you can have some set which is K plus N, right? And you take the SU foliations map side. Okay, so you take the SU foliations, okay. And that will be all these things, uh, zero N of K, right? That's the same. What is that? It's actually like, you can say like, you have a holonomy map of your SU foliations because you have global protective structure you have a holonomy map that is from F tilde C of N to F tilde C of zero, right? You have a holonomy map between these two center formations. And you can say it's like that alpha zero N of K is actually equal to the holonomy maps, maps your K plus N, right? You just use the holonomy maps to maps to zero. That is, what your alpha zero and action. Okay, that is the same. And we will use these things, use these things here. Okay, and, and you look at the, that zero and action about from the center to the center. And we know like that it's, if it satisfies, like you map the weak stable of zero, to the weak stable of some some forty eight some some leaves, because right now, okay, uh, maybe okay. I will keep this one. It's a new picture. Please notify notice that for your SU foliations, okay, that is FC, delta C of zero, and actually in here you have two family of foliations because it's equal to weak stable plus weak unstable, right? So here you have two family of foliations, which is weak stable and a weak unstable. Let's choose this is a zero. Okay, and you lift it plus some n to here. Like for n, you have also these things. That is your n, okay, that is your n. And you also have weak stable and a weak unstable. What I'm saying here is like, you maps this translation maps the weak stable to the weak stable some points because you have this point, let's say alpha zero n of zero, right? That is the point you take the SU formation to here, that is SU formations. And you know, like as I said, you can take this, this is the set and use SU holonomies to here. If you can map this weak stable foliations to the weak stable foliations to this point, you map this one to that one. Okay, map this one to this one. And for any integer n, and then you will get, you will get like, you are actually like you're, you are already done. That's what I want to say. Because you map strong stable to strong stable, or strong stable to strong stable. If for every, actually you, what you, uh, actually the truth is like, you just need one n, now zero, one n is enough, but, but I will say every n. Okay, the same holds if you get these things, like maps the, the, the weak unstable to the weak unstable, to the point of weak unstable. And the proof is like, use the fact, like the, because like the weak stable is a minimal and a linear of the conjugacy. So, you know, like for any weak stable leaves of a point, your projects down, it is dense. It is dense on TD. So you take the copies of all in all lattice of this weak stable N. It is actually dense in, in the in RD. That is, you take the weak unstable, and it's actually like in, in, in RD, it's actually some irrational things. You take the all the lattice, so it is dense everywhere in the in, in the <coughs> in RD. And since it is dense, and you if you have these things for every every n in ZD, and it tells you actually like your strong stable and the weak stable and the UU, that is uh, the stable and the UU is actually integrable. And you, you get everything. Why? Because you can say like, 
you have these things because it preserves bias you for image. So actually it gives you some kind of surface. And this surface is actually tangent to the SU plus weak stable. So it is actually jointly integrable with this one. And it is in a dense subset because you know like your weak stable is dense. So it is, you have some complete surface tangent everywhere in a dense subset. And it actually gives you a truly for each. So this gives you like, a, if you preserve your action, preserve the weak stable, then it is as you. So the other side is the same. Like if you, this one is integrable, then your weak unstable is jointly integrable with SU. So you, you, in either way, you will get the same. Okay, that is the for each. You, you just use like the minimality of the weak stable. Okay. And so right now we want to prove like the zero one by contradiction. So right now, as we said, like if for every n in ZD it preserves, then we are done. But right now we can assume there are some latis, some some latis like n one and n two, such that it is transverse. You map the weak stable is transverse with the weak stable. What's that mean? That means like use SU holonomy maps maps inside and then it will not this is the weak stable of this point when you map side these things will vibrate like that it will not a straight line of the weak stable right this one we are maps and also for this one like the weak unstable okay because here you have uh, some weak unstable and when you maps it, this one when you use holonomies it will be something like that it is, you will get something transverse. Okay, get something transverse. <clears throat> but please notice like the transverse is at some point here. It's not so straight, but actually you can find some points. It's actually transverse. Here transverse is just the topological transverse. You, you intersect the both components of this thing, okay? And now the first step after this assumption, and the first step is to show like, there exists M1 and M2, which tells you, okay, it is actually transverse, not this point, it's actually transverse to, to the zero of this one. What's that mean? That means, Okay, that is the weak stable of zero. And the theorem tells you, okay, I can find some M1. This is actually not important. So that is some M1. And you use the holonomy maps, maps this weak stable of M1, Q-ta and you use holonomy maps to here, you are transverse to the zero point. Okay, it's transverse to the zero point. Please notice like this one is always transverse with the weak unstable. Okay. And the proof is like, again, just use the density of like the, the weak stable, right? Because you know, like when you map something, you transverse here, and what you do, you put, you try to find some latest N3 such that the center of this N3 is close. Oh, sorry, this is zero. This is not N3, this is zero. Close to the zero. And also the weak stable of N3 is close to the things where you are transverse here, the red one. And then you look at the holonomy maps like from N1 to N3. Okay, you look at the holonomy maps between and you get the transverse. You look at the holonomy maps of N1 to N3. Sorry, just like here, because your N3 is here. So your maps by SU variations and you transverse this red one, you must transverse to the green. one. So it, it gives you like you transverse to the zero things. That's, that's the same. Okay, that is you take M1 is equal to N1 minus N3 and you, you have the transverse. <clears throat> so, uh, for the other side of weak unstable M M two is the same. 
Okay, it's the same. So right now I will take something larger or larger and I'll find some lattice, which we get both transfer with some kind of double transfers. So you take some like N is equal to A power L acting on M1 and minus A power minus L acting on M2. That is also some lattice. And for this one, you will know like for this action of N, like the weak stable is transfers to the weak stable of zero and the weak unstable transfers to the weak unstable of zero. So you get some pictures will be like this. Okay, so that is your weak stable after action is transverse to this one. And also, of course, also transverse because it's a global transverse. And also like your weak unstable after the action is also transverse with the, with the weak unstable zero. You get a double transfer. Okay, and why did you get that? Because you look at what is the action of A power L of M1. You just do it by definition, okay? This definition, it's actually like you, can, you have these things, right? That is the solvable action, what tells you, and acting on the weak stable of zero. And you know, like this is actually F power minus L. So this is invariant. So you are actually, actually like this. So if you are transverse at the first time, then you iterate by L times, your transverse becomes very large because this dark blue, the dark red is like at first what you transverse. And after some iteration of F L, F power L, you, you notice like here is expanding, here is contracting. So just like the lemma lemma, you, you vibrate very large. Okay, you vibrate very large. And also, you know, like no matter at the first, what your weak unstable to be, after some iterations of a big F, it will converge to the weak unstable of zero because it's also like the lemma lemma. So it tells you when L tends to infinite, this action, you have the weak stable of zero, the image we are largely transverse to this one. And that the weak unstable of zero will converge to the weak unstable of zero. That is the equation. And okay, you have something symmetrically about A power minus L acting on M2. So one thing like the weak unstable is largely transverse and the weak stable is converges. Okay, converges. Okay. And it tells you, okay, you will get it. Why? I, I will explain to you. I, I will put like the center foundation to be vertical, okay, which is uh, easier to do for me to draw the picture. So that is F center of uh, zero. And you know, like you have the weak stable and the weak unstable, which is zero. Weak stable, weak unstable. And you know, like for like the positive one, that is that is the thing, and that is a power L of M1. And you have that the positive stable, stable and unstable. That is A power L M1. And you know, like that, as I said, like the weak stable largely transverse to the weak stable. The weak stable largely transverse to. So this holonomy maps tell you, okay, it will like that. That is uh, alpha of uh, zero, A power L M1 of weak state, right? Okay, zero. And for the unstable, for the unstable, it will it converges. So this one thing converges. Okay, it's almost a converges. And on the other side, you have some kind of A powers minus L or M2. And you also have some kind of weak stable and weak unstable. And for these things, you know like that for the weak stable to the weak stable, it is actually converges. So this weak stable 
comes to here, almost converges. And the weak unstable is largely transverse. Okay, it's largely transverse. So you can pose these things together. You can string the holonomy maps from this one to this one. You know, like the holonomy maps is actually some kind of uh, composing of homeomorphisms. And it gives you like this weak stable because here is a blue and must transverse to this weak stable. And this weak unstable, which is blue here, must transverse to the weak unstable. Because in here you are transverse, you can post some translations to here, you are also transverse. This gives you actually a double transverse, gives you a double transverse. Okay, that, that's the picture. That's the picture you have. You actually get a double transverse, double transverse. Now we try to compose with the dynamics, the action of your F. And we can string your F on the center foliation is actually a set of hyperdynamics because your F is contracting the weak stable and expanding the weak unstable, right? It's, it's like this. And so, and you can string another G. The G is like you compose with some translation to minus N and you acting by some F and you compose with some kind of translation of N again. So it's actually also set of type like this, but it's contracting with this weak stable of zero after the translation and expanding this weak unstable about, uh, about alpha zero and like on this part. So you get some pictures like this. Okay, it's just also set alike, but it's, it's not looks so, so good, but you get the double trans, double, uh, you get the dynamics like that. One is F, one is G. Okay. And we claim that for N large enough, like our f of k and the g of k is generated a free group. Okay, it's actually generated a free group. And when this claim works, I think you are done because a solvable action, a solvable group don't contains any free subgroups, right? It's actually already done. And why this is, uh, you have these things. It actually comes from the picture. Why? Because actually, why it is a solvable thing? Uh, it is a free subgroup. Let's come back to this picture. Because you, you have like your F, F is contracting here and expanding here. That is your F, right? And your G will be something like that. Uh, that's contracting and that's expanding. That is of your G. Okay, so you take a disk. Okay, I will take the blue one. So you look at any relations for K large enough, you want to show like any, something like F of A1 of K, F then the G is B1 of K times and then F for A2 of K and G of B2 of K. And the finite times, okay, I, I will just write, is G and the BL of K and F is AL of K times it's not identity. So it will tell you it's a free group, right? That's the same. How, did, how could you do that? You first look at the action of F. Then you take a what? You take a disk. Let's say like a, A1 is positive. You take a small disk here. You iterate it by F. When K large is enough, you have the lambda lamb, right? You iterate the disk by F it will come to something like here, right? It will come something like here because it will converge with unstable manifolds. And you can string the action of G. And you know, let's assume like B1 is minus. So what you do is constrain the minus of G. So you take a sub disk here. This is small sub disk here and you iterate it by minus of G and it will come to something here. Right? It will come something to here because you also have the lemma lemma, but for minus G. And then you acting by F again. And this time you can take a positive, then you have something take disk here. If it is negative, you take a disk here. So if negatively, 
then you iterate it by F, it comes to here. No matter it is, when you take a K large enough, you just play the ping pong game. It's actually a ping pong game. And you will show like, no matter how many this takes, as if K large enough, it's, it will never equal identity. Okay, it will never equal identity. <clears throat> so that is actually generated a free subgroup. However, as we said before, we have this relation, right? It is a solve action. And you know, like there are some integers, which is not all zero. And the composing is actually gives you the identity. And this is a contradiction. And you know, like, because a solver subgroup don't contain any free subgroups. So, and this gives you the proof. It tells you at first, two of these bundles, at least one of them is integrable and you get spectrum agility. So it tells you like the SU foliations of, of your F actually after the conjugation is also to the linear foliation, SU foliation of your A. And this finishes the proof. Okay, that, that's the thing. And I come back to the question. It's like when we take pick F close to A and we pick any one of them, is what happens is turn into the we get something like when this is one dimensional and this is one dimensional, it works. And we don't know what happens for other cases. And we can, maybe we can do it. I think we can do it since it's like, this is two dimensional complex and this is two dimensional complex. We can also prove that, but it needs some more hard works, not so easy, but also play the ping pong game. But when this center dimension S of U in the weak stable and the weak unstable are, are not equal, this argument doesn't work at all. And, and we don't know how to handle these questions. Okay, um, I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have time for questions or comments. Okay, so then let's thank our speaker again. Thank you. And we have a break, or we have an announcement. Okay, still fun. Uh, there will be a conference photo today, just before lunch at twelve fifty, in front of the palace. So just on our way to the to the lunch. Thanks. And twenty minutes break. That would be like, and then I run because.